Hi everyone. Welcome to my seventh webinar. I'm so happy you can all be with us. Um, I see people here from lots of areas of the US as well as some other countries, which is pretty cool. Um, I love seeing where everybody is from. So thank you for sharing your time with us. I hope I can uh, give you some insight today on a little bit of my thought process as well as the actual um, creative process itself. Um, the first image I'm going to start with today um, is one that I actually, I, I did a written tutorial in last Thursday's blog and a few people seem to be having issues with how to bring textures into an image. So in this first one I'm going to use that uh, yellow rose that I had in that blog image and I'm going to show you live how I did that image. Um, so this first one I'm going to start with a JPEG file, but the others I have um, either, well some were shot in JPEG because it was an older image, but the others are raw files and I'm actually going to start in Lightroom and show you my adjustments there. Usually we go right to Photoshop and just get into the creative stuff, but today I'm going to show you a little more detail of my process. And I'm also going to show you when I start applying textures, um, how I, I choose some, um, what my thought process is when I'm thinking about what textures I might want, and then some we're going to use, some we may end up tossing. So you're going to see that as we go along as well. Um, as always, and it shows on the screen, I do have the notes available for today's webinar. Um, including the textures and images um, for just $5 in my store and that will be on the, the ending slide. I also have a discount code for you guys and um, I don't know if we can do it live, but we are also going to today um, give away to, to two winners the um, seven new textures that I released last week, that bundle. We um, Dave's going to kind of pick numbers and then when I when I look at the list of like who attended, um, we can just pick numbers that way. Um, and I will email you if you are a winner tonight. And if you already purchased that bundle, then I will give you credit to purchase something else from the store. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention too, when we are starting with Lightroom, as I mentioned on some of the files today. If you don't use Lightroom, you can use the same settings I'm using in Lightroom in Camera Raw. So don't feel that because you don't use Lightroom, it doesn't apply to you because it really does. And again, all of these um, settings are in the notes and that's what I'll be working with today so that I can recreate these images. So let's go ahead and get started. And um, for this first project too, I, because if you've watched me before, you know I work with two monitors. So usually you see me dragging in my textures just because it's easier because I'm looking at them on the other monitor. But not everybody has two monitors. So this first project especially because I'm going to demonstrate that bringing in the textures process, I'm going to work as if I only have one monitor. So I'm going to go up to my file open and then I'm going to go to my um, folder which is right here um, and I'm going to change the view so I can see it. So we're going to start with this rose and this is where we're going to end up. So I'm going to go ahead and open my original file. I said this one I have done the basic stuff in Lightroom but the next ones I'm going to show you all those basic things as well. This one's more about the process of bringing in um, the files and how to get your textures into this image. So as always I'm going to duplicate my background layer with a control J. There's like five ways you can duplicate a layer. I like the control J. Dave likes to drag the background to the new layer icon. You can go to um, layer, duplicate layer, and there's a couple other ways. Um, I think the control J, and it would be a command J on a Mac, um, is the fastest and that's my preferred way. Um, all right, so we've done that. So this one I'm going to start with going into Topaz Studio. So I'll go up to my filter menu button, Studio, Studio 2, as I typically do once I've done my basic adjustments and come into Photoshop, the first thing I do on an image is run my AI Clear. Um, if you're not familiar with the AI Clear, that does clarity, detail, and denoise 
all at the same time and it's smart enough to know which areas to sharpen and which areas not to sharpen. So like the blurred background, it's not going to sharpen that, but if there's noise there, it will take that out. The other thing that I do, especially something like this, it has lots of um, detail in the petals. I'm going to do some precision detail. And for this one, I, I just usually I do the small and overall medium details. Um, this one I'm going to do 0.15 and I don't go too extreme for the most part. I just like to give it a little boost, just a little more crispness. And you'll see those um, details popping out just a little bit there. So then we're going to say accept to go back to Photoshop. And typically when I'm working on something, I rename the layers um, just so that I remember what I did there, especially if it's something I think I might want to recreate later. I will also write down settings as I go. Um, so now we want to start bringing in textures. So this is kind of like a side note in my notes of how to do this process and I have some extra screenshots of it. So like I said, typically I would just drag it from a second monitor, but today we're going to not do that at least on this project. So let's go to File, Open. It brings us back to our file. Now, typically you wouldn't have these things all lined up and ready to go unless you've done this project before. So I would go to um, my textures folder and poke around and kind of see what textures I want to try. In this image, I've already chosen them. So we're going to choose this first texture. These are all, um, these three are all from the new watercolor collections. Okay, so here's the point that some people seem to have some issues with. So we have our image, which is a separate file, and then we have our texture, which is a separate file. We need to get our texture file into the main image file. So we're going to use our move tool, which is the top one on our toolbar here on the left. And what I'm going to do, if and this it's a slightly different process, and I'll talk about that in a second if you're using elements, but everything we're doing today, you can do in elements. It's just some, you know, slightly different places. In Photoshop, you're going to have tabs for each of your images. So this texture one, I'm going to click in the name of, on that tab. I'm going to click hold and just pull it down so that I can see that it's undocked from that toolbar. And when I let go of the left mouse button, you will now see your texture and your image behind it. They're still two separate files. We're going to continue to use the move tool. And click anywhere in the texture, click, hold, drag your mouse over the image. You'll see it turn into that other little icon with the plus sign. When I let go of my mouse button, the texture is now over here on top of my image. You can close this texture file because you don't need it right now. Um, and then we're going to, you can see that now your texture is on top of your image. Okay. So now what we need to do, I'm going to scroll out. You can see our texture is bigger than our image. So again, we're still using the move tool. If you have the handles already there, you're good to go to resize it. If they're not showing, if you hit control T for the transform, you can line up the texture and then I'm going to grab the corner. I'm holding my shift key so that I can unconstrain the proportions because I want it to match my image size. Click either the check mark or hit enter to accept that change. And now we have our texture on top of our image. Now you're going to go, okay, well, I can't see my image anymore. We're going to get to that in a second. But if you turn it off, there's our image, there's our texture. Now they are layered on top of each other. Somebody just asked, why not use Topaz textures? You absolutely can use Topaz textures. I just have so many textures and I do have a lot I've brought into um, Studio. You'll see that when I do go into the texture menu, I have some of my own in there. Um, However, because I've got literally thousands of textures in here, I tend to go directly to the texture files and kind of poke around 
and decide on what textures I want to use. But if you can absolutely use Topaz textures to do the same thing. Okay, and yes, you can upload textures to Studio and I'll show you how to do that when we get in there later on. Alrighty, so for this particular image, I wanted the texture to only be on the, on the background. I didn't want it to cover the rows. So I've temporarily turned off the visibility of that layer. I'm gonna select my rows layer because I'm gonna make a selection and create a mask out of the selection. So I'm gonna go over here to the quick selection tool. And if you're on the latest version of Photoshop, the 2020, if you right click that, there's a new object selection tool, which is pretty much the same as the select subject under the quick selection. I think it, it might refine it a little bit better. Um, so I'm gonna use that object selection tool and I'm gonna click on select subject. Now some images it's gonna do a better job than other, uh, but it's kind of a good way to get a head start. You can see it didn't grab the sleeve or the stem, but we can adjust that. It saved us a little bit of time of manually selecting everything. So I'm gonna zoom in so we can see a little bit. And I'm now gonna switch back to the quick selection tool. And you'll see um, my cursor is the circle with the plus sign, which means it's gonna automatically add to the selection. I don't have to hold any keys down to add in this particular tool. And I'm just gonna go in here and select that leaf. I really don't want that dark edge, so I'm gonna leave that as is. Um, and you'll see my cursor changing to the hand tool so that I can scroll around. Um, and the way that I do that, if you hold down the space bar, that will change your cursor into the hand tool and then you can drag the image. It's a lot easier than using these sliders because then you can go any direction that you want. Um, that one looks pretty good. We need to select, make my brush a little smaller. And we're gonna select some of this edge. What I'm trying to do with this one is I didn't want any really like kind of dark edges around the outside of my selection. And I'm gonna show you how we are gonna modify that in a second. But I wanna make sure I get this particular leaf a little bit. And then I need to get the stem. Actually, I wanna get rid of this dark spot. So to change my cursor to the minus sign, I'm holding down the Alt key on a PC, that'd be the Option key on a Mac, so I can take away from that selection. And then I'm gonna scroll back so I can see the whole stem. And I'm just going to try and do this in one shot. I'm gonna make my brush about the size of the stem and let's see if it works. And I'm just dragging, I'm holding down the left mouse button and just dragging my cursor down. And that did a pretty good job. And we can, again, you can always tweak it a little by holding down the Alt key. And then it took away a little too much. So, you know, you can finesse it. Um, but that looks pretty good for what we need right now. So there's two ways that I'm going to modify this selection a little bit. The first thing I want to do is so that I don't get any of those kind of dark edges, I'm going to make this selection slightly smaller so it's gonna contract and not catch those dark edges on the you know, edge of the petals and things. And we're gonna do that by going to select, modify, contract. And I'm gonna do just two pixels. And I'm gonna say, okay. And then I'm going to inverse this selection so that the background is selected. So we're gonna to go to select, inverse. So now you'll see the marching ants are around the outside. So our background is actually selected instead of the rows. I'm gonna to go to select, modify, and feather. And that's gonna soften my selection slightly because I want it to blend better with my texture. And I'm just gonna do like three pixels. Three or four would be good and say, okay. Now, the reason I wanted the background selected is we're gonna use this selection to create our mask. And it needs to be opposite of what you think it needs to be. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn on our texture layer and I'm gonna highlight it so that is our 
layer. Our selection you can see is still, the marching ants are still working. When I click on the add a mask icon down here at the bottom of my layers panel, and when I'm on that texture layer, it created the mask of the flower, which is what we wanted. So now the texture is only covering the background, not any of our flower. And even from here, um, you can use you know, black and white brushes. You can grab a brush. It's on a soft round brush. Yep. Um, and if you wanted to, whoops, you have to be on the mask and select black. Yes, we are on black. Um, actually, I want white, so I'm going to flip that because um, I want to mask away a little bit more of that dark edge there. And you can, you know, if you go too far, I'm going to undo it. You can play around and, you know, finesse, I would straighten out the stem a little bit more, but you get the idea. Okay, remember black hides, white reveals. So black is hiding the texture from our flower. The white area is the background, so you're seeing what is on that layer. Okay, so this one I'm actually going to leave it normal and 100% because I don't want to see any of the green background. We're creating an entirely new background. So now I want to bring in texture number two. So back up to our file, open, and we're going to use this pastel wall texture with a whiter border. So again, I've opened it. It's a separate file. I'm going to use the move tool, grab that tab, click, hold, and pull down. You don't have to go far, just enough so that you can see the two images. Click in the texture and drag it over our flower. And then we can close that. And then we're going to resize it. So I'm going to scroll back so I can see it. Hold my shift key and constrain it to that. So, um, and if you want to remake your image fit the screen, if you hit control or command zero, it makes it fill the space again. Okay, so now this one, hold, will this work in PaintShop Pro? I would think so, but I don't use PaintShop, PaintShop Pro, so I'm, I couldn't tell you 100%. Typically, any of these programs that do layers are pretty similar, so I would expect the masking and things to be pretty similar. Um, you may have to check their manual. You know, if so, you can try it, and if it doesn't work, then you know you got to tweak it a little bit. Um, so now I want to use the same mask on this layer. So instead of recreating it, there's a quick shortcut we can do. I'm going to copy this mask to this layer. And the fastest way to do it, if I hold down my Alt key, which would be Option on a Mac, first let me click on that mask, okay? I'm gonna hold my Alt key, click and drag that mask, and now it's masked that layer. It saves you a whole lot of time, especially if you've got a very complicated mask. Now this layer, I'm gonna click back on that layer to highlight it. This one, I'm going to change the blending mode to soft light and lower the opacity to about 58%. I would say about because it doesn't have to be exact. All right, so now you can see some of this texture coming through that one. And as I'm working with textures and deciding what I like and don't like, I'm quite often turning on and off layers to see what looks good and if they work together. So that's a part of it. And you're going to see me doing a lot of that as we go on tonight. Now we're going to add one more texture, file open, and we're, I wanted to darken the edges. I didn't want just a typical vignette though, and this is one of, like I said, one of my new watercolor textures, and I thought this would look pretty cool with the flower. So again, using the move tool, grab that tab and pull down, click in the texture, and drag it over. Close the texture file. We can line that up, scroll back so I can see the edge. And there we go. And control zero will refill the screen. And this one, let me change my page here. This one I am going to use a blending mode of multiply. And again, when I'm trying these, I typically are running through 
the list to see what's going to look good. Um, multiply is going to darken the texture. And then I'm going to bring back the opacity to about 80%. And on this one, I decided it, it didn't change the color of the rose that much. If I turn it on and off, the rose is pretty much the same, just a hint darker. But I kind of like that, so I did not mask that one off of that flower. And that's the finished image. So let's see if we have any questions. Have you tried making the selection with Topaz Remask? You can use Topaz Remask. I usually use Remask when I have a very complicated selection, um, like something with hair um, or edges of trees or things like that that are very difficult to select with the typical tools in Photoshop. But for something like this that has pretty clean edges that was easy to separate from the background, I tend to do it here because it's just quicker than going to another program. But again, my method is a suggestion. It's definitely not the only way to do something. So if you're more comfortable using the other programs, that's perfectly fine as well. So let me open the Q&A. I thought, I, oh, that's the top, okay. Um, let's see. If you use one of your colored masks on a different picture, is it possible to change the color of the mask to, I think you're talking about the texture itself um, to coordinate with the colors of the picture. Absolutely. You can change the color of any texture um, to pretty much anything you like. Um, There's several ways to do that. Um, hold on one second. Let me op I'm going to just open up a texture again. So this was the first one we used. The one way you could change colors in a texture is just with a hue and saturation adjustment. Sometimes that works well, sometimes it doesn't, depending on the um, particular texture, but you can see you can start changing colors. Um, the other thing you can do is to, if you have the old Topaz Restyle, um, which is one of their early products, you can use that to change the color palette of an image. I use that a lot when I'm creating textures. Um, I also use Topaz Impression um, sometimes on my textures to create new, new textures. So there's several ways that you can do that. So yes, you can change the color of textures. You can also make them black and white. Sometimes you just want the effect of the texture without the color. Um, and I think I use one of those in one of the other projects tonight. Um, so you'll see that as well. All right, let's see, any other questions? Um, do you ever use place embed or place linked images? Yes, you can use the place command rather than just dragging in the texture. Um, I don't typically do that, but absolutely, that's just, it's another way. As we know, there's always multiple ways of doing things in Photoshop, so you absolutely can do that. Uh, somebody asked if I use an Intuos Pro tablet. I do not. Um, I, I have a, a Wacom tablet, um, and I really don't use it as much as I probably should. Um, so let's see, can you add textures to Topaz as a RAW, or they need to be a JPEG? They need to be JPEGs. You cannot bring in TIFFs or RAW files. Um, and the reason is you don't want a layered file to be brought in, so it needs to be a JPEG and a flattened file. So that's why even when you buy textures or get them online, they're 99% of the time they're JPEGs. Um, I haven't used, I have Topaz, but I haven't used it yet because I'm scared. Don't be scared, you can't break it, <laughs> okay? You're gonna see me use a few things um, tonight and, um, and you know, send me an email and I'll, and, we can talk some more about that. Um, what would you do if you don't like the dark space in the top left? You could clone that. Um, I, if you, I did think about that actually when I was doing it. Let's just close that. You could use the, sometimes the healing brush will work. Um, we can try that. It may or may not. Yeah, I don't really like that. It also, when you do healing and cloning, make sure that your texture or whatever you're doing 
is not on a different blending mode other than normal. So you want to set it back to normal in 100% and do that and then change it back. I find it works better that way. But you could also try the clone tool and you would be able to, you know, select a portion and you could do it that way. So you could definitely, you know, get rid of that. Yes, dear? Yes. And um, Dave wanted to remind you, if you do want to get the notes, because they do have all of these steps and then you can refer back to it, um, they are just $5 and available in my store. And I'll show the link again at the end. Um, so I am going to move on because we've got a lot to cover yet. And, and to some of the questions, if I can't get them tonight, in Thursday's um, blog, I will answer some more because there's only so many I can get to and, and keep us within our time frame. Alrighty, let's close this guy. No. And if we do run over a few minutes, if you hang with us, um, that's fine. It'll keep recording. So if we go, you know, a few minutes past five, um, we can do that as well. I'm going to try and keep it as close to five, but it's already 426. And I've got three projects I want to show you. Um, alrighty, the next one is this butterfly. So I am now in Lightroom. So I, I had these three images that I knew I wanted to use tonight. I put them in a separate file, uploaded it to Lightroom. And so I'm opening this. So I want to use this image. So from here, I'm going to go into the develop mode. So once you find your image, then you want to start editing it. And I always start in the basic um, section. And I'm going to hit reset because it's remembering the things that I did to this the, uh, you know, when I was testing it yesterday. So you can see it's much darker than where we were a second ago. So just to speed things up, I'm going to type in the numbers because I already know where I want to be. And you can see just moving that exposure, how much better that image looks. And I'm going to tab through this. And if I don't change a number, that means I just left it at zero. Highlights I brought down, minus 25 shadows. 19, and then down to clarity, 37, vibrance 9, and saturation 7. So that is our basic image. So now from here, I'm going to take it into Photoshop. So I'm just going to right click, edit in, and choose my Photoshop. And there we are. Um, so the first thing I always do here is duplicate my layer. And I'm going to do some cropping first. Um, we're actually going to do a little more cropping at the end, but this is part of my process. Um, so I am starting with my crop tool. And I actually put a screenshot in the notes so I could remember how I did this the first time. So we are here. And about there. And this one's going to come over about there. And then I brought up the bottom just beneath that leaf. And then I'm going to click the check mark. Now I know I'm going to want to play in Topaz. And I have noticed, and I thought this was unique to Topaz, but it's not because um, Luminar does it as well. Third party plug-in products do not recognize cropping done in Topaz. I mean in Photoshop, sorry. Just like if you crop in Topaz, it won't let you come back to Photoshop if you started in Photoshop because it doesn't recognize that crop. So I find it easier to just always do my cropping in Photoshop. And then what I'm going to do is I've duplicated that layer. I'm going to flatten the image and then reduplicate it. I know it seems silly, but this is how you can get those other programs to recognize this crop because we flattened it and then I can go back and duplicate my layer again. It's just one of those quirks, you know, with all the proprietary information that all of these things do. So the first thing I want to do before I, I go over to Topaz, I'm going to take my spot healing brush and I wanted to I'm make this smaller. And I'm just using the bracket keys to make my brush bigger or smaller. And that's the square brackets that are to the right of the letter P on your keyboard. 
And I'm just going to get rid of a couple of these little blemishes on the leaf that I don't like. And sometimes you have to go over it more than once. It's just the nature of the tool. Right, that looks pretty decent for now. And the other thing I want to do is I want to darken some of these really bright spots because I know when I start layering textures and things on them, they're going to end up being too bright. So I'm going to go over here to the um, dodge and burn tool and we're going to use the burn tool. The one thing to remember with the burn tool is I always use it at a around a somewhere like 30, 35 or so percent. Because if you go too much at once, the image takes on a really dark gray tone and you'll see it get a little gray. But if you go over it too many times, it gets very gray. And I'm just darkening this spot under the leaf down here. And then I didn't want to darken the bokeh spots, but I do want to darken this one just a little and maybe this leaf and this little bit of brightness in the background. It's just a little too bright for me. So I'm toning that down a little bit. All right. Okay, and again, if you want to rename the layer, you can. We can say, um, what do I do? Heal and burn. Then I'm gonna duplicate that layer because I want to go into Topaz and I always like having that on a separate layer. So if I decide I don't like it when I get back to Photoshop, I can just delete that layer and I still have everything else that I've done. So we're gonna go into our filter and do our AI clear and precision detail. In AI clear, probably 99% of the time I use the default settings. Um, unless I really want to enhance some sharpness or if it's a, a noisy image. And if it's really noisy, then I'll use Denoise AI. Um, this does a good job on something that's just got some, you know, typical, what would have been film grain back in the day. All right, and from here. And... 17. There we go. Except to go back to Photoshop. We can rename that. Duplicate it. Now I'm going to go back and start playing with some presets or looks in Topaz. So this is where the creative process starts. What did I want to do with this image? The first thing I wanted, or kind of the main thing I really wanted to do was to, the background is very busy. So I wanted something that's gonna darken that background and make the flower and the butterfly stand out more. So that's what I'm looking to do with this image. This is probably one of those images you'd look at and go, eh, you know, I'm not sure if I really like it. Um, but sometimes I like a challenge of starting with something and, and seeing if we can make it look good. Um, so in the looks, we have different categories and they breaks, rather than looking through all of the looks, which are hundreds, you can break them down by different styles. So I started with the dramatic category and I scrolled through, I looked at different ones, didn't really find a whole lot. I did click on this pin type afternoon and you can just click one, you don't have to apply it, just click on it and it'll it will preview it. And then I said, no, that's way over the top. So then I went back up to the category and chose artistic. And I tried a few in here. Um, I liked, sort of thought I would like that one. Eh, it's okay, not great. Um, kept scrolling. This is one, actually one I created for Topaz. There's a couple of mine that came with the initial release of Studio 2. That one mm, doesn't work so great on this image. And I went down to the Van Gogh. That's not bad, that one's a possibility. But then I decided to try the dreamy category. And I went down to, and I tried a few. I'm just not going to click on every single one to, 
take a ton of time, but you, you know, typically I'll scroll through and anything that kind of looks good, I, I would click on. So I chose this dream strokes and I said, hmm, I like that one. We're going to work with that. So now I'm going to hit the apply and that's going to open up that preset. It's going to add it to our image and then we can tweak it a little bit from there. So what I did in here was I clicked on the impression layer and I didn't really change the actual brush strokes or anything, but I went down to the color section and I wanted to bump up some of the colors. Um, to, so first I clicked on the purple. And when you hover over one of these squares, you'll see those red diagonal lines. That's showing you where that color is in this image. So if you're not sure what color you want to change, you can just hover over them and it will let you know what you are going to be changing. So in purple, I changed my saturation to 0.50. So I wanted to bump up the purple some. Then I clicked on the orange and I changed that to a minus 50. Actually 51. Okay, and then I clicked on the blue and I added some blue to help that purple as well to about 25. All right, and then under the lighting section, I brought the brightness down just a little to 0.09 and the highlights I brought down minus 30. And now I can just, this X is just going to close this panel and you can see that we have our image. This is our preset with the two things that make up that preset. And I decided I wanted to add another texture. So I might add filter and I'm, you're seeing a short list because I have my favorites checked. If you click on filters, you'll see everything. I just usually have it on there. So it's a shorter list to scroll through and click on my texture. I'm going to go into the category and I'm going to choose Meredith images. And these are the ones that come with studio. All of these other MI ones, those are my own that I've added in here. And I'll show you in one minute how to do that. So under Meredith images, if I wanted to add something next to the category, you're going to click this little square with the arrow there, and that's going to open up your texture manager. And these are all of the current categories that are in here. You would just click on a category to add basically a folder of your own textures. You can say your own textures, say, okay. Uh, oh, I already have one. Okay, so let's name it your own categories too. And that will now be in the list. And then you would click on import texture and go to the folder. You need to have them all in one folder so that you can do them in bulk. And this is another one of my class folders. So I could just bring in, say I wanted this one, this one, and this one. and click open and it's brought in those three and there they are. So anytime you wanted to use those, you would just click on your own folder, which is now in this list and there they are. So it's as simple as that. So you just have to hit that icon and it's pretty straightforward from there. Okay. So in my Meredith images ones, I'm using this one called cotton candy. I did not name these Topaz did, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to change my blending mode from normal to multiply and I'm going to bring the opacity back just a little. Now I like what this is doing for the background, but it's of course making my flower and butterfly too dark. So we're going to add a mask to this layer here in studio so we can mask that texture off of the image and it's pretty much the same as in Photoshop. You're going to hit the layer, the mask icon right here and you're going to get this box. I'm going to use a brush. It defaults to a black brush. If I wanted a white brush, you just move this slider all the way over or anywhere in between. And then you can um, still use the bracket keys to change the brush. 
And you'll see, it's kind of hard to see on the dark background, but there's a red circle and a green one around it. The difference between the red and the green circles is the softness. So it defaults to 50% soft. If you wanted a harder brush, then you would bring it down this way. You'll see the circle gets narrower. And if you wanted it a lot softer, you could take it higher. Um, so I'm just going to mask like the butterfly. And oh, I forgot to change that transparency. I want to take all of the texture off. up there. And then for the flowers, I'm just kind of doing a very loose uh, mask here. I'm not getting too particular or close to the edges. I just want to brighten up these flowers a little bit. And so I'm just going to go over them quickly like that. And you could be, you know, I could make the brush smaller and be a little more precise. But I want to get through this quickly. So you can see where I've masked them away, just like if we had done it in Photoshop. Then I decided to readjust the opacity of this texture once I've masked it up to 62% to make that background even darker. So we're, then we're going to say accept and go back to Photoshop. And you could rename this if you wanted to. And duplicate it. And I decided to go back to that burn tool again and to tone down these particular leaves just a little bit more because they were still a little too bright and pulling my eye away from my subject. And now we're going to use a one of my brushes to add a border. So I'm going to add, so we can name that again, burn. And then I'm going to add a new blank layer. And in the, the notes version, I gave you the um, PNG of this file. So you could bring it over like a texture and get the same effect. Um, so I'm going to click on brushes. I'm going to go up to my this one, my Meredith Images Grunge Borders. Grunge 6 was the one I wanted. I want my color. Let's see, get to my next page here. I'm going to change the foreground color for this brush to, oh, it remembered it from when I did it yesterday. That's the right number. It's a dark green, which I actually chose by just moving my brush over here and clicking in the image to get that color. So what you want to do when you're doing a brush is you want the brush to be just a little bit smaller than your image. In um, Photoshop, you can go up to 5,000 pixels, but in Elements, it's 2,500. So if it's not the full size, that's okay, because we're going to adjust that anyway. I'm going to line it up with the upper left corner, and you want to make sure that your brush get my cursor. You want your brush opacity and flow to be at 100%. We can always lower those later, but if it's too light, it's you can't darken them. So we want to start with it at full strength and click once with your left mouse button. So that's our color. Now I'm going to click on the move tool just so I can get rid of that. Control T to bring those handles back. And just like when we're resizing a texture, we're going to make that cover our image. And it, what was that? Um, is the new layer a raster layer? Yeah, it's just a regular, um, it's not a, a anything special. Just click on the new layer icon. It's not a smart layer or anything. It doesn't need to be. It does have pixels. Um, so I want to change, let's see, where am I at? I want to change this to... Hmm, where's my, trying to find my spot in my notes. Oh, there it is. Blending mode, I wanted to try hard light. And then I brought the opacity to 84%. Yeah, something like that. 
82 will do. And then I didn't like the texture over the butterfly, so we're going to add a layer mask and go back to our brush, go back to the soft round brush. Whoops, didn't change. There we go. Now it's really big because of the other brush that we had made. And I want to reset my foreground colors to black and white and make my black foreground color. And you would just do the same thing. And as we did in Topaz and mask it off there and a little bit off the flowers. But even after I did this, I went, well, I'm not sure I really like that layer or that texture border. So we're going to turn that off for a second and we're going to try something else. And this is part of my process. Sometimes you try something and you go, not sure I like that, so let's try something else. Um, so I'm going to go to the second burn layer and I'm going to duplicate that because I'm going to go into Studio. Again, like I said, I always like to do my Studio stuff on a separate layer in case I don't like that. It's easier to delete it. I'm going to go into Textures and what I like to do in the Textures, there is a group of just borders easier to narrow it down. And there's this group called border fade ones. And I like to use these a lot. I think they work really well. They're subtle, they're easy to blend. And I liked this border fade three. So you can see if I click in here, it's just darkening the edges. It's not changing the middle, which is really what I wanted. So I'm going to go with that one. And we're going to hit accept to go back to our Photoshop. I'm just going to delete this other layer we applied because I really didn't like the way that looked. And then from here, I decided I wanted to crop it a little bit more. So usually I try to do that before I add a border texture, but because this is really around the edges and not affecting my flower, I'm going to crop this after the fact. Sometimes I would go back and, and do the crop before that texture. So we're going to come in here, come over a little bit more here, and then I decided to bring that up above that bottom edge of the leaf. And I didn't really do anything on top. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to add one more border. So this was uh, border fade three. I'm going to duplicate that, go back to Topaz, and we're going to add one more border. Alter texture, go back to the borders, and border fade nine. And I just emphasized the darkness on the edges of that image just a little bit. And there we are with our finished image. So you can see from whence we came. So that did a nice job of toning down the background. Um, it gave a little, little more texture to the butterfly and stuff with that preset that we used. And now I kind of like this image. You know, I by toning the background and brightening the flowers and the butterfly, it just brought it a little more to life for me. Alrighty, so let's close that one. I've got two more I want to do, so I'm going to try and get through these quickly because it's almost 10 of. Um, so, oh, I wanted to go to Lightroom. All right, so back to our library. And the next one we're going to do, I'm going to try and go through this one really quickly. So we're going to go into Develop. And it actually is remembering, so to save time, I'm going to go with these settings. These are what I input yesterday. And then we'll edit in Photoshop. And then, yes, I want the Lightroom adjustments. And so here we are in Photoshop, duplicate our layer. Um, I did use the healing spot healing brush to get rid of some of these a little bit brighter 
areas and I want to get rid of this leaf and I actually tried the healing brush. I wasn't sure it was going to work. Um, I did not too bad a job. Sometimes things like this work, sometimes they don't. Then you would have to use the clone tool. But I actually did a pretty good job and I just went over it again. That's respectable for what we need. Um, you could, you know, really get in there with the uh, clone tool if you wanted to change that little middle spot there, but that will do for what we need right now. Um, we're gonna duplicate that again. We're gonna go in and do our usual AI clear and detail. And we're gonna that clear. And this one, the detail is really going to make these water drops pop. So this one I actually pushed a little bit more than I typically would, just because I really wanted to bring out all that detail in there. And about there, you can see how much those are popping more and you really pick up the veining in the flowers. And so what I decided, you can see here's our layer, and this is again why I do things on a separate layer. So there's the before the AI um, clear and detail and the after. Now I love what it's done for the flower, but I don't like what it's done for the background. So we're gonna add a layer mask. And I'm gonna use the selection tool again and to make a really quick selection of the background because it's such a different color than our flower is gonna be really easy. And this is slightly different than the way we did it before. I've actually made the selection of the background and that's the part I wanna fill with black. So from here, I'm just gonna hit Alt and Backspace. It'd be Option on a Mac. And it's filled that selection with black. So it just saved us, it was the same thing if we took a brush with black and painted it all, but by using the selection tool, it made it a much quicker process. Control D or Command D to deselect. So that made it a much quicker process. Now I wanna go back to Photoshop, uh, sorry, to Topaz. Um, but if I did that now, I mean, I'm not gonna pick up the proper parts of the image. Photoshop, again, it, just like you can't read a, a crop, it's not going to properly read the mask. I need that um, part of the image from the layer beneath it to be part of this layer. So I'm going to, rather than flatten it, the option is to create a merged layer that combines all of these but doesn't flatten these layers. And the way we do that is Control, Alt, Shift, and the letter E. On a Mac, that would be Command, Option, Shift, and E. Um, and I always name that Merge just so I know why that layer is there. And again, I'm gonna duplicate that layer so that this is the layer I do my Topaz work on. Let's go back into Studio. And for this one, we're gonna go to Add a Look. And I tried quite a bit of different things. I'm gonna go in the artistic category again. Um, I did try them all and I actually ended up with on my MI Impressionist one. I like what that did for it. It gave it a nice painterly look and we're gonna, we're gonna make some tweaks to it as well. So we wanna hit apply. And I like the way the, the texture is. It toned down the flower just a teeny bit too much. And you can always adjust any of these layers or you can delete a layer. So what I would do first is like turn off the eyeball of a texture layer. Now that's more our original color, but we still have the impression effects. So I'm gonna just turn that back on and then I'm gonna hit the trash can to delete that layer. So we have the look that I want, but we have the brightness back that I wanted. Except to go back to our um, Photoshop. And now this particular texture 
um, did create a few like white spots along the edges. You could just use the healing brush and clean those up and there's a couple on the petals. So you would just go in and do that. Some effects do that because they are brush strokes. So it may have some white like of the actual canvas that, you know, if you were painting and you would just need to tweak those. And then you could name that with the MI. Impressionist is what we did there. We'll duplicate that. I'm very big at everything on separate layers, as you can tell. Um, and that's my personal preference. Some people don't care and they do it all on one layer and that's fine too, whatever works for you. Um, hang on one sec, we have some questions. Why are we not seeing the background all black around the rows? Because I didn't make the background black, I just masked that effect from the background. So if we undo a couple of these layers here. So when I applied the sharpening, I'm going to disable that mask. You can see how the, the leaves got very sharp and bright and I didn't want to brighten that background. So by masking the effect that we applied the AI clear and the detail, it let our original background show through just like if we created any other mask. So you can see now it's darker again. So that's our original background that we had in the original photo. Um, and then, so our sharpening only got applied in here. Okay, good question. All right, so we're back to our copy layer and I actually didn't need to copy that one, but that's okay. Cause I'm gonna bring in a texture. Um, and what I wanted to do was just brighten that flower even just a touch more. So I, I actually could be done at that point. When I first did this, I'm like, yeah, I really like that. I'm like, but maybe I want that flower just a teensy bit brighter the way that it was before. So I decided to use a texture to do that. And the one I chose, this is um, a graduated color one that I created. I wanted the dark part at the top though. So I'm gonna go in first and edit um, I gotta select it first. Actually, I'm gonna drag it in first because that's what I did before. So we're going to, again, separate it, drag it in, we can close that. And then there's two ways you can rotate it. You can either just put your cursor up here to get the curved arrow and drag it and swing it around. Sometimes it's a pain to line up, although if you hold the shift key, it usually will get it into place, or you can go to edit, transform, and then rotate it there. So either way, whatever you prefer is fine. And then again, I'm gonna resize it, hit the check mark, and then we're gonna change this to soft light and bring it back a little bit, about 82%. And you can see, again, turning them on and off will give you the real idea. So that's without it. And that's with it. Just brought back a little more of that yellow orange color. Um, and then I also didn't want this texture on the background. So the way we did before, I'm going to click on this mask because it's masking a background, which is what I want to do. I'm holding down the Alt key, click and drag that up there. Cause I don't need the background to be brighter. I wanna keep that dark, but now you can see we've just affected our flower. And then I decided to lower the opacity even a little bit more to about 72. So I got before and after, and we are done with that one. And we are just about at five o'clock, but if you've got like 10 minutes, hang with me. I'm gonna do one more project. And it's something other than a flower for those of you who like to shoot some other things. Um, so for this one, let's go back to our Lightroom and our library. And click here, and we're gonna do some grungy stuff. Um, this is the steel stacks, um, the old Bethlehem steel plant in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. If you're ever in the area, it's definitely worth the trip. They have a, a beautiful display um, and a, whoops, clicked on a uh, preset, um, 
I have all my settings still in here, so I'm going to go ahead and send this over to Photoshop while I'm talking. Um, there's a walkway all along the front of the stacks so that you can get up close um, and really see it. And they've got some different panels with displays and the history. And there's a museum about a block and a half away, the um, National Museum of Industrial History. It's definitely worth a stop. I did a workshop there a couple years ago um, around Christmas time, which was pretty cool. Obviously, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and Christmas. Very crowded, but it was fun. Um, alrighty, so we're here, control J. Um, I started to, to use the healing brush to heal some of these center spots, and then I'm like, well, I'm gonna change that sky. So I'm not gonna worry about those because we're gonna use Luminar in a second, and we're gonna change this sky. Um, so actually, we're gonna start with that. So instead of topaz in this one, we're gonna go into, uh, yep, let's go to filter, um, Skylum, and Luminar. And I'm actually gonna do some other tweaks in here. You can do full editing in here as well as the sky replacement. There is sky replacement, if, you're not, if you didn't see the last couple webinars, is just blows your mind. It, you, it's amazingly fast, it's so accurate, it even outdoes remask, but it only works for skies. So if you're masking something other than a sky, um, it won't work, but it's just totally amazing. Alrighty, so we have four tabs here. These are Essentials, Creative, Portrait, and Pro. We're going to start in the Essentials tab, which is like your basic settings. We're going to go under AI Enhance. I changed AI Accent to 16. And the best way to learn these, they have a ton of tutorials on their website for this product. And um, Sorry, I'm trying to read and talk at the same time. Um, they have really great tutorials on learning this product. But I was, my way of learning things is usually jump in, move the sliders, and see what they do. And then I'll go back and watch some of the, the uh, webinars. But that's just me. Um, and then under Details Enhancer, which is like the detail that I've been doing in Studio, it's kind of the same thing. I'm going to do the small and the medium. And then we're gonna to go to the creative tab, which is where we do our sky replacement, AI sky replacement. You can bring your own skies in here as well under sky selection. If you go all the way to the bottom, you can load your custom sky images. And that's why there are so many in here because I did bring in um, a bunch of my own. Um, but there are quite a few in here, and they do have some others for sale as well. So I'm going to use Puffy Clouds 2. And then there are some things, you can click Advanced Settings and you'll get more sliders. I like th the way this looked. Um, you can adjust the position of the horizon, and I'm going to bring this down so I can see the top of the clouds. Um, so I came down quite a bit on this one, and you'll see it moving, and I ended up there, and then under the sky exposure, I brought that up a little to match. It does a great job of matching, especially when you're doing sunset ones, the skies, and then it tones the image to match, so it's not just replacing a sky, it really does a great job. Um, of matching the colors. If you watch some of the last couple webinars, I did like a sunset one that was amazing with a sailboat. And then you can also change colors more if you scroll down under color styles and LU2 stands for lookup tables. They're basically like looks. Um, and then there's, there's a ton in here. And I actually liked this one called Long Beach. And it just changed it just a little bit. Okay, then we're going to hit apply and that will take it back to Photoshop. Did you have a question, Bib? Oh, he, all right. He did a random gen number generator and we have three? Two. Two? Yeah. These two? So Alan Cole and Gloria Johnston are our winners. So I will email you both and, um, 
and you can let me know if you have the bundle already. If not, I will send you the links to it. And if you do, then we will have you pick something else from the store. Congratulations and thank you for being on the webinar. So we are back to Photoshop. I'm going to duplicate. Uh, let's see. Nope. Let's see. Where am I at? Green pen. Okay. So when I got to here, if I zoomed in, the sky looked a little bit greeny to me. Uh, let's scroll down. So I decided to do my AI clear. So I am going to duplicate this. And this is where AI clear does a great job because it's smart enough to know to smooth that out, but not smooth that out and actually bring out more of the texture in those um, rusting stacks there. And then we're going to add a few textures to this image and you're going to see again some that I, I liked and then some I decided eh. so you're going to see how I turn them on and off. So we're almost there. Alrighty, accept. And to save time I'm going to drag these from my other screen because that's how I typically work. Um, alrighty, so let's do our control zero to get it back on our screen here. And so now we're going to start with some texture. So the first one I brought in, this one I mentioned black and whites before. This one is a black and white texture. And we can resize it. And I changed this one to soft light and opacity about 85. And then yeah, it's okay, but we're going to try something else. So I'm going to turn off the visibility of that one and bring in another one. And then that's when I start turning things on and off and deciding what I like and don't like. The next one I'm going to bring in. These are all from my um, couple Grunge 3 and Grunge 4 collections. This one we're going to change. I think I've used soft light on all of these, which is unusual, but sometimes that's what works. Uh, bring that down to about 80%. And then I start doing my on and off. And yeah, that one's not too bad. Um, and if we turn this one back on, you can see how they look together. The black and white one brightens it a little. Um, I'm going to leave that one off for a second. Actually, I'm going to turn them both off for a second. We're going to try one more. I'm going to bring in another crunch with a faded border. And we'll see what this looks like. This one we did soft light at about 70%. No. And if we turn this one back on, yeah, I don't like what that's doing to the edges. The white is not working. So I'm just going to delete that one because I know I don't like that one at all. So again, it's part of the process. I do like that one. So I'm going to leave that one on and we're going to bring in something with a blue tone and we'll see what this does for it. Now I went with more grungy textures based on my subject matter. I was trying to accent the fact that it, you know, was a, a grungy type of an image with that peeling paint. Soft light and just about there. And it brightens it up some. Um, I don't like that that one, so I've decided, all right, let's get rid of the black and white that making it a little bit too bright. This one, I like, I like these two together, I think. Um, I think I might bring down the opacity of this blue one, though, just a little bit. And then we're going to try one more. And this one is a tan color. And what I, the tans in kind of like, warm browns, it's going to warm up this image because right now it's a very cool color. So we're going to see how that works. Sometimes it looks good, sometimes it doesn't. Again, we're going to do soft light and come back to about there. So that's the before. It's a very cool image. 
and there we go. And it's given it a little warmth. Um, some people might like it better that way, which is perfectly fine. I kind of like that little bit warmer image. Um, and that's it. And we're done. Hey, 510, that's not too bad. Um, so let me bring up our ending slide and give you sales for today. Um, so if you read the blog, you know I have the seven new watercolor sets that came out last Thursday. They are currently 50% off until this coming Sunday at midnight. And if you want to get any of the other texture sets or ebooks in the store, you can use the code WEB25 at checkout and save 25%. And again, the notes for today's session are just $5, and that gives you the textures that you've seen me use, as well as the images and a PDF of the notes. Um, and these are my affiliate links, um, which I also post in the blog, but if you, if you need one of these, you can always shoot me an email or check the blog. You can save 15% with my link encode on Topaz. Um, you can save $10 on Luminar, and they're also coming out with a new product later this year I've talked about in the blog, which is just amazing. I can't wait to get a copy to try it out. It's not even ready for the affiliates to try yet. And my Nick affiliate link. I hope you guys enjoyed this tonight. It's a little bit different. Um, let's see if there's any other quick questions um, that I can get to. I think we've covered most of it. Um, again, I read through all of the questions afterwards um, because they will print out and save to my computer and I will do some more Q&A in Thursday's blog. Thanks everybody, have a wonderful evening and we'll talk to you soon.